Hi ladies, welcome to Words of Wisdom. Ladies, today I want to speak with you about dating and boyfriends and sex and those type of things. That's what I'll speak with you about today for those of you who are single. For those of you who are single. I remember when I was growing up, I had my share of dating, probably more than the average, average teenager. I had my share of dating, you know. And so over the years, I have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I've been married for a long time, but I dated a while. I dated more than a few guys. And so I, I, I have learned some things that I would like to share with you and that I hope that will be a blessing in your life, especially if you are young and single and are dating. That's what I want to share with you today, okay? Dating, dating today and always. Dating can be confusing, heartbreaking, and sometimes overwhelming. If you know, if not more, even more things, you know, dating just in general, it's not easy, especially today with social media and just just so many distractions and just so many things going on in the world. You know, I really feel for young people today. I really do. I, I feel for them. I don't think it's easy today. Today, I don't think it's easy. So for the young women who are not sure how to go about dating, say you're 14, 15, 16, you're a teenager, that's mainly who this is for. Also older women who may be uh, uh, in their early 20s or even your 30s or maybe even older, maybe you're still dating. So I want to give you some insight from a biblical standpoint today, okay? That's what I want to share with you. I want to share with you what does God have to say about dating and, and what, would, what, would, what advice would God give you? You know, as Christians and godly women, we are supposed to be oracles of God. We're supposed to be messengers of God and convey to to Christians and would be Christians. Well, what, what does God want me to do? How would God do this? What would Jesus do? Those type of things. OK, so that's so that's what I want to share with you today. So hopefully this brief study will be a blessing to you. OK, so go with me in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 13. Let's go to Hebrews 13 verses 4. It's in the New Testament, way in the back. Hebrews 13, verses 4. We always want to see what God has to say because He is God. And what He says matters. What He says matters. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 13, verses 4. And then New King James, New King James Version says, Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. God will judge. So as we can see, marriage and adultery and all forms of sexual immorality is very serious business to God. And it should be to us. It should be to us as well. Unfortunately, today, marriage and getting married, getting married is not honored. It's not honored. So people prefer to live together and have premarital sex. Yet God is not pleased with this and those who have sex outside of marriage will not receive God's blessings. Yet those who do marry will be showered with God's favor. I remember when I first got married, I got married at 18 years old. 18 years old, 36 years ago, I got married. And I don't know what it was. Me and my husband, we, we lived together first. I wasn't raised in the church. I didn't know any better. I don't think he knew any better either. And he was raised in a Baptist church. And so anyway, we shacked up what they call shacking up. We didn't know any better. No one even told us, don't shack up or nothing. We didn't, I didn't have a clue. We did not have a clue. So anyway, I just remember shacking up. We didn't have any money. We were so broke. We would have like, after my husband got paid, well, when we were dating, cause we weren't married yet. But after he got paid, after my boyfriend got paid that I was living with. So I have not, not I'm not so innocent ladies. I'm not so innocent. <laughs> But after my boyfriend that I was living with got paid, he and when and when we paid the bills, he would only have or we would have like twenty three, twenty four dollars left over to our name to last till next payday. Only like twenty some dollars. And even back then in the eighties, that wasn't a lot of money. I remember cringing when when I went to the grocery store. I remember cringing. The times when I went to the store, I remember cringing because we didn't have any money. And so when I would buy, we had barely little money. When I would go and buy food, it was like, oh, it's terrible. It, it wasn't fun. So I never really looked it forward to going to the store. And so we didn't do too much. I guess we hung around the apartment and I don't really remember doing a lot, maybe going to the park or the movies every now and then or something like that. And back then the matinees or the movie theaters, they, were, they weren't expensive as they are today. And so anyway, boy, it was hard. It was hard. And so I remember once we got married, my husband's in the military. And once we got married, it's like the floodgates of heaven open up. 
man, just a blessing. My husband got a pay raise. We had medical insurance. Uh, we were on a military base. They gave us this beautiful apartment, two story. It was like a condo. I think it was a three bedroom. It was so nice. And then we got to go shopping at this store called the, I think they call it the commissary. Can't really remember, but oh man, it's like, it's like the super Walmart today, even nicer. Just, oh man, the stuff they had in there. I remember going there shopping, getting able to buy whatever I wanted. I had so much food. I bought so much food. It could barely fit in the freezer. I was, <laughs> I was making up for lost time. I was so happy. But it made me think, God bless my marriage because I got married, because my husband was smart enough to marry me. God blessed our union. It's no accident. A lot of jobs. You know, when you get married, the husband get a pay raise and all this because he has family. That's not an accident. That's a blessing from the Lord. And that's what happened to me. And it was like, oh, wow, we just had so many blessings. And then, I, I mean, just I remember not even being able to find a job. I remember not even being able to find a job. When, when I was dating my husband. But once we got married, people were offering me jobs left and right. I was like, wow, it was just like, I'm serious. I was just being blessed all over the place. And I wasn't even a Christian. I wasn't even going to church. I didn't even have a church home. I believed in God. I thought I was a Christian. I told people I was a Christian. I wasn't a Christian. I didn't go to church. Didn't even go to church. I didn't try and go to church. And didn't read the Bible, nothing. I wasn't, I wasn't a Christian. But look how much God blessed me just by getting married. And the same happens today. And the same will happen today. God blesses marriage. God loves marriage. We just read it. The marriage bed is undefiled. That's just saying that God loves marriage. He blesses it. The husband and wife together, God see them as one. And he is going to bless that. And it's like God created marriage, the institution of marriage. And it's beautiful when we do it God's way. And so, I, you know, people are not getting married today. They need to get married. Get married. So God can bless you and your family, especially if you have children. Don't let these men not marry you. Do not, no, no, women lose out. Do not let this, this, this man not marry you. He ain't worth it. You're worth it. You're worth the ring on your finger. You're worth all of that. And if he don't think you're worth that, then he ain't worth it. Okay. He ain't worth it. So make him marry you, make him marry you. Okay. So anyway, so what is dating? What is dating? Dating means to court. Dating means to court, woo, or go out with. That's what it means according to the dictionary. There was a time when people only dated when they got ready to get married. Yet today people date for various reasons. People date for various reasons today. So when should you begin dating? When should you begin dating? In general, a young lady should begin dating when she is ready. When she is ready. What do I mean by ready? What do I mean? When she is emotionally and physically secure and can handle the mental and emotional baggage or burden that comes with relationships. That comes with relationships. Today when one is not ready can lead to hurt feelings, emotional scars, and premarital pregnancy to name a few. Okay, so you want to be ready. You want to be ready when you, when you, uh, uh, you want to be ready. When you get, when you want to date, you want, when you think about dating, you want to make sure you're ready. That's not something that you just jump into. You can get your feelings hurt. A lot of young women get their feelings hurt that date when they're like in their teenage years, early teenage, 13, 14, 15, because they're not ready emotionally. They're not ready. And so a lot of young men, they, they want to ask, start asking for things that they want to start asking for things that the young woman may not be ready for. Okay, may not be ready for like premarital sex. I know today many teens want a boyfriend. I get it. I get it. I wanted a boyfriend when I was only 13. I remember this guy I liked. His name was Pookie. Pookie. <laughs> I was only 13 and I thought I was in love with Pookie. Ooh, I was in love with Pookie. He was one of my, he was one of my best friend's brothers. He was very handsome. I really, really liked him. But my mom, my mom found out about, I think my sister told my mom, she was always telling me, she's tattletale. She, my older sister, she's tattletale. She's telling me all the time. So anyway, she told my mom about Pookie, me and Pookie. Okay, my mom, my mom made me break up with Pookie. <laughs> my mom made me break up with Pookie, okay? 
looking back, I'm glad she did because he was very he was very mature for his age. I don't even know how old he was. I'm gonna guess he might have been a year or two older than me. He may have even been my age. But I could tell he was very flirtatious. His kid, the way he kissed me or tried to kiss me and all this, it was like too much for me. Cause I was only 13. And and I have a fun feeling if I had kept seeing him. I may have wound up having, you know, going too far with him or letting him go too far with me. And I am pretty sure I was not ready to have sex. I was not because I did not have sex until, let me see, three, two, let me see. About four or five years later did I, did I actually have sex and break my virginity. Okay, so I wasn't ready, but I could tell Pookie was. He was very mannish. So, so, like, so I was not ready to have sex really until I met my husband. I really wasn't. I met my husband about a year after I broke my virginity, about a year after. Cause I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't raised in church. Don't judge me. No, I'm just kidding. You know, some, you know, some people say that. Okay. So anyway, uh, okay. So I wasn't a virgin. The culture I was raised in, in the eighties, the culture I was raised in, girls were automatically given birth control pills. It's like society was just like, we don't really care what you do. You ain't going to do right anyway. So here, just take these pills. Just don't get pregnant. And I know that was my mom. God bless my mom. But that's like, that was so important to her. It's like, she didn't care if I caught AIDS or nothing like that. It was like, just don't get pregnant. Just don't get pregnant. You know, so girls were not expected to be virgins before they married. And it's probably the same today, if not worse. It's probably worse. So if you're raised in a Christian home, you're very blessed. If you're raised in a Christian home and your parents expect you to be a virgin until you get married, you you know how blessed you are. And if they're sitting down telling you this and trying to trying to encourage you to to delay premarital sex, you are so blessed. They're watching out for your own well-being. Don't don't hate it. Don't hate it because one day, one day you're going to be like your parents most likely and, and you're going to care about your children and you're going to be like, oh, I don't want my child to, to not only just not get pregnant, but there's so many diseases out there. And even if they don't kill you, they, they destroy your quality of life. They destroy your quality of life. And then when you do meet someone you might want to get married to, now you got to tell them you got this disease. So we want to be careful. You know, you want to be careful, and that's what your parents are thinking about. But that the age that I was, the, the uh, era that I was raised in, girls, it was no big deal if they were virgins. And I and the boys didn't even care. And I'm pretty sure they don't care today. Okay? But, but you have to make sure you're ready. Because most likely, most boys or young men, they're going to want to have sex. I hate to say it, but it's true. They're going to want sex right or wrong. That's what they're going to want. So uh, as young women, you want to be cognizant of that. You want to be aware that, okay, he's going to want sex. Even boys that go to church, not all of them. There's some good ones, but they're few and far between, even in church. They're going to want sex. And so you have to be mentally prepared. Okay. Okay. You may say to yourself, I'm not going to have sex. Okay. But you have to think that he's, he may want to, and how are you going to deal with that? And so that's the part of being ready to be to date to have a boyfriend. Okay, before dating, a teen living at a teen living at home also does well to have her parents consent to date. You want to make sure you have your parents consent. Yet many teen girls date without their parents' approval, and this is not good. When my mom told me to break up with Pookie, I respected her. I did not sneak behind her back and go date Pookie. I did some stupid stuff when I when I got a little bit older as a teen. But at that time, I did. I, I honored my mom's wishes, and I did not date Pookie. A young man who would date a young lady without her parents' consent, in essence, does not respect her. So if you're dating a boy or a young man, and, you're, and you don't have your parents' approval, I'm saying, I'm saying if you live at home, and you don't have your parents' approval, he does not respect you. He doesn't, because that's respect. There are societies in our world today. A man cannot disrespect or marry a woman unless, unless he has the parents' approval. And, and everybody expects it. But in our world today, especially in America, I don't know what's wrong with us. We just went too crazy with the freedom. It's like our parents have no say-so. And I'm not saying this because I have a son. I have an older son. He's 26 or 27. You know, that's not why I'm saying this. Because of my child. Because of my son. No. It's just it's the right thing to do. Because you have to think, man, if someone, you know, what if this person is crazy? You want someone to be watching out for you. They may see something that you don't see. 
There was times I had friends, girlfriends, and my mom was like, my mom didn't like them. I'm like, why my mom didn't like them? At the time, I was like, that's my friend, mom. Leave my friend alone. And as I got older, I'm like, now I know why my mom did not like them. Because they hated me. I just couldn't see it. They were not good for me. I'm talking about even girlfriends. So we want someone in our court. We want someone in our court. So so if a man, if a man or young man or boy wants to date with you, he should wait and respect your parents' wishes. And will if he is a good man, if he is a good person. He will. Okay? So so you want to have your parents' approval. If you're if you're under 18 and you're living at home, you want your parents' approval. For dating okay it's just going to protect you and you're going to have God's blessings because there's a Bible principle that when we respect our parents or obey our parents that we have God blessings and we live a longer life and a longer healthier life okay in general the age to begin dating I believe it varies I believe it varies depending upon the maturity of the person okay not everyone matures at the same age level not everyone matures some teens may be ready to date at 17 and some not until 19 or 20 or even older, it depends on the person. It depends on a person and no one should be criticized because they want to begin dating later in life. So if you want to begin dating later in your life when you're like 30, so what? That's your business. Or 20 will be more realistic, 20. That's 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 your business. You know, I remember, I remember when I remember when I was a virgin longer than most of my girlfriends. I was a virgin longer. And I remember one of my girlfriends that I thought was my friend, that I thought she was my friend. She used to criticize me loudly in front of her friends or our other friends that I was still a virgin. And she was like condemning me for it, condemning me for it. And I'm like, you know, at the time, I didn't know what to think. I was young. I was young, 15 or 16, you know, and she was condemning me. And, and, and it's not good. So it's wise to avoid peer pressure. Don't, don't let no one tell you what to do when to do it as far as friends or whatever. You no, know, don't do that. You have to go you have to go with what's inside of you, what's inside of your heart. Mainly we want to follow the word of God. If we're Christians and godly women, we want to do that. Okay, because God's way is always best. Always. We'll never regret doing what God say do. You would never regret doing what God say do. But we can regret doing things that we that we choose to do that go against the word of God. Okay? So so you so Beginning dating, uh, it varies at the person's age and when they're ready. Okay, so so who whom should you date? Whom should should you date when you are ready? It is best to date someone with whom we share similar beliefs. It is not wise for a Christian to date an atheist. You don't want to date someone that don't believe in God. Even if you don't believe in God, <laughs> you don't want to date no one that don't believe in God. It's just not good. It is wise to date someone who is ready or prepared to date and who can handle the consequences of dating or courting. These include, as I mentioned earlier, mental and emotional baggage and possible pregnancy if sex is involved. Okay, so there are consequences of dating, like I said, you know, like I just said. Possibly pregnancy, mental and emotional baggage, and the person want to have sex when you're not ready. Okay, so the person's having sex must assume that they will conceive because it's, because it is always a possibility, even if they are using birth control methods. Otherwise, they are not prepared to date. So if you are dating, okay, and you are having sex, you it is best to assume that you are going to get pregnant. You just have to say to yourself, I'm going to get pregnant. You have to believe that because otherwise you're not prepared. Because most people have sex to get pregnant. The girls get pregnant. This is why we have so much abortion. And we have a lot of children born outside of wedlock. Because people think they're not going to get pregnant. And you can get pregnant at an early age. I've heard of girls getting pregnant at 11, 12 years old. So I assumed that they were already on their menstrual cycle. But you can get pregnant. So you have to assume that, that you're going to get pregnant if you're having sex. And that's the best way to approach it. Okay? So you want to make sure that you want to date someone with your same similar beliefs. Okay? And, and someone that is ready. They have to be ready to date too, not just you. And I'm not telling you to have sex. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying a lot of people do, even church members have sex. Okay? But you got to be got to remember, you know, do you want to sacrifice not having God's blessings on your life? Of course you don't. 
And then if you are having sex, you have to say, okay, I can get pregnant. I'm going to get pregnant. And then you have to say, okay, am I, am I ready to deal with that? Okay. So, so whom should you date in general? Choose a man who respects you first and foremost. A person who honors you in general would not harm you, especially not physically. If he respects you, he respects himself, okay? If he abuses you verbally or physically or tries to get you to do drugs or alcohol to be dishonest or break the law or force you to have premarital sex, he does not respect you and he does not respect himself. You want to make sure that you're with someone who respects you and who respects himself. One thing about my husband, when I dated my husband, when we were dating, when I, when I was dating my husband, uh, uh, before we got married, of course, he did not force me into sex. I could tell he wanted to have sex, but he did not force me. He did not do like I had some boyfriends. If you don't have sex with me, I'm breaking up with you. He never did that. Those words never entered, never left his mouth. I don't know whether he was thinking or not. I don't think he did. I was testing him. He doesn't know it, but I was testing him. I was testing him to see if he was going to stay around because I was going to make sure he respected me because I had dated a lot. I had been with a bunch of losers. And more than one of them, you know, they, once I didn't have sex with them, because I was a virgin for a long time, even though I was dating, a lot of them just dumped me and broke up, never called me again. I didn't know why I broke my heart, because I wasn't ready to date. I wasn't ready to date. I wasn't ready to have sex, and I was not mentally and, and emotionally ready for things that come along with dating, as I mentioned earlier. You know, so, 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 yeah, so those are the things that we want to keep in mind, okay? Do not date or continue to date a young man who tries to force or encourage you to have premarital sex beyond your wishes. Period. Just don't. He's not worth it. Make him wait. He can go wait. You don't have to be with him while he's waiting. You don't have to be with him. Okay? Because he's making you do something you're not ready to do. And then the consequences that come with it. And so then you have to think, oh, if I get pregnant, he's not going to be there. Most likely, most young men or boys, they leave the girl once she conceives, once she gets pregnant. They leave. Okay? And so you don't wanna you don't wanna have to deal with that, especially if you're a teenager. You know, you, you got enough on your plate in life. You're trying to grow up and discover yourself and what you want to do with your life. You're trying to prepare for your life. And in in, in in general, you're gonna live a long time. In general, you're gonna live 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. And so you don't want to start out on the wrong foot. You don't want to do that, okay? Do not date a man who encourages you to break the law, especially as it pertains to underage drinking and drugs. All of this, especially premarital sex, proves he is insecure and immature, and it usually means he will not remain faithful to you. So if you're thinking about dating some guy and he's known as Playboy, and these girls are always calling his cell phone and all this stuff, ooh, be careful. Be careful if he always has to go out the room to answer the phone and he's texting in front of you and he's like, who is that? And he, he's like real secretive. He's, he's, he's just trouble that you don't need. That you don't need. And so the less baggage and trouble we have when we're ready to date and ready to get married, the better. The, the more available we look. The, the, more, uh, uh, the more we're prepared, the more attractive we are to the opposite, opposite sex. So ladies, keep in mind that a young man may tell you anything to get you to have sex with him. Okay, young ladies? He will tell you anything. He will, he will tell you, I love you. I love you. You're the most beautiful woman in the world. You're the only one for me. On and on. He'll tell you these type of things just to have sex with you. I don't know what it is, young men. Their hormones are through the roof. And they just act like they're going to die if they can't have sex, especially if they see a girl they like. And they will say anything. I mean, it's like life or death sometimes the way that they behave. So he tell you these things don't believe him. Many men like this, they have or will have no money and plenty babies and, and baby mama drama. And you're better off without him. He is not a winner. He is not. You don't want to waste your time. And so when you're young and you don't have any kids and you're focused on your future and what you want to do and you have goals and dreams, you don't need, you don't need no one like that in your life messing you up. There's, there are some good men out there that at least have some type of focus and goals and dreams. And men like that, they're self-destructive. They're messing their life up. They don't even know it. I feel sorry for him. The best thing you can do for him, pray for him. Pray for him and let him know. Say, I'm praying for you. I'll call you in about five, ten years. Or you can call me in five, something. You know, just you don't need that in your life. You don't need that in your life. So ladies, what age should you marry? What age should you marry? I believe it depends. 
In general, if one is ready to date, then they are ready to marry. Keep in mind, we can experience dating without having to have sex. You can date without sex. Sex before marriage is never, ever a good idea. In general, if he can't wait, then he's not the one from you from God. As I said earlier, my husband waited on me. He waited. I still wasn't a virgin. Me and him still had sex before we got married, but I made him wait. And I would, if I had knew what I knew today, if I was a member of the church and I was a Christian, he would have had to wait till we got married to our honeymoon. But I didn't know any better, but I had enough sense to make him, make him wait. And I did. I made him wait for a long time because I wanted to make sure that he wanted me for me. And I wanted to make sure he respected me in more ways than one. And you do well to do the same. If he can't wait, he ain't for you. He ain't for He don't respect you. He don't respect you. And he don't even know how to respect. He probably don't even know how to respect you. And probably don't even know how to respect yourself. A lot of times men do things. They don't even know why they're doing it. But we have to watch out for ourselves. We have to watch out for number one. Because they're not watching out for number one. They don't care. And then we get pregnant. Us young girls get pregnant. And they disappear. How many of your young girlfriends do you know? 25 and under. Who have babies. And where's the boy? Where is he? And if he's one of those that pops up every now and then, he ain't got no job. He can't take care of himself. He can't even take care of himself. So anyway, so you, so, so what age should you marry? It depends on your maturity level. I personally do not believe one should have to wait until they finish college or are self-sufficient to date or get married or are over a certain age, like 20 or 25. Okay. I'm speaking in general. Please hear me out. Please hear me out. Parents. I know your parents are listening. You're like, what? Because I know most people believe today that the older you, the older you are when you get married, when you get married, the better. And some tell children, oh, get your college degree first, get yourself, you got to be self-sufficient, maybe get you a house and be able to pay your own bills and all these things, right? Yet putting off marriage too long can lead to fornication, unplanned pregnancy, and not being able to find a mate, especially for females when they are ready to marry. Let's go, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay, 1 Corinthians in the New Testament, chapter 7, verses uh, 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9. New King, New King James Version, it reads, But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. I believe the King James says that they can't contain themselves. Let them marry for it's better to marry than to burn with passion than to burn in passion. So in general, if one is ready to have sex, then they are ready to marry or should marry. Yet this does not mean they should not get educated on marriage and learn what it means to be committed beforehand. So I'm not saying that anyone that wants to have sex should get married. I'm talking about a mature person. That say like 17, 18, 19, or 20. You know, when me and my husband, when me and my husband were dating, I was 17 when we first started dating, so he was 19. Yeah, he was 19. I think he was 20 when we got married, and I was 18. And it was perfect. We both wanted to have sex, especially him, but, but we both wanted to have sex. And so we should have got married. We just did not have the education and the knowledge that we needed. And so we loved each other. We lo I loved my husband. I loved him even before we got married. I loved him. You know, but a lot of times I look back or people try to tell me, oh, you got married too young. No, no, I was ready to get married. I needed a husband. He needed a wife. We just needed some more guidance. But ten, there's no guarantee that 5, 10, or 20 years later that we would have still had the education or the knowledge that we needed. Sadly, there are people get married in uh, age 25, 35, 45 that still don't have the knowledge and education about a marriage as much as a teenager does. So age is not a guarantee. What people need is they need love for each other and they need love for God. That's what you need to get married. And then the sex, the premarital sex, no age mentioned in the Bible when one should marry. There's no age. I believe 18 or 19 can be good considering the male fiance is employed and secure in himself. Okay. So if, if the young man that you, that you are in love with and you're considering married and that's marriage material, if he has a good job and he's secure with himself. Okay. And I'm speaking in general. Some people are never ready to marry no matter what their age, 
even 30 or older. So, so, you know, you want, you want to make sure he is secure within himself and he's employed and being employed is a sign of being secure in yourself. When me and my husband first got married, he had a job and he was secure in himself. You know, he still had some maturing to go, but he, he was already a breadwinner and he was always, he was already a provider. He was already a provider and that's the type of person you want to consider marrying. Okay. That's what you want to do. So there's no age mentioned in the Bible. Like I said, I got married at 18 and I believe it was best. I truly needed a husband and my husband needed a wife. We just didn't know it. We just didn't know it because we did not have the spiritual guidance. We did not have the spiritual guidance. I wasn't raised in a church and, and my husband was, but just because you're raised in a church, you still don't have that guidance. I believe what people need today, what people need to do today is, is, is they need knowledge and education about marriage. So I believe the main problem with marriage today and remaining committed is with education on the matter. We, we teach our children. Today, we, we don't prepare our children for marriage, and we need to. We need to. If your parents haven't prepared you, talk to your parents about it or someone at your church, a Bible class teacher, elder, or deacon. Someone at your church that you trust. You know, and so we need to teach our children. We assume that our children are going to be uh, single forever. And this is not good. I don't know why we do this, but we do. We assume that our children are going to be single forever. Sadly, many would rather prepare their children for sex, though we also fail in that area, than to teach them how to commit their lives to one person. If we did this, if we taught our children how to commit their life to one person, then perhaps uh, the divorce rate and children b born outside of wedlock would be less. But just think about it. Just think about it, where you worship and everything. I'm speaking in general. We need to teach our children how to be committed and not just how to not get pregnant, how to avoid sexually transmitted diseases by giving them condoms or birth control pills. You know, how, how about how to be committed? How about teaching our young men and our daughters, our teenage girls? You know, how, how about we do that? And how about young girls? How about, how about we pick up books on marriage and all this before we just go run off and uh, want to be with some boy? You know, and he may be a good, he may be a good catch. You know, so I'm speaking in general. I'm just saying, let's educate ourselves on these things. I wish that's what I would have did. I wish someone would have talked to me about marriage or something, but they didn't. They didn't have to learn this myself. And no one ever taught me. The little, even what I know now, I learned from the Holy Bible, which is the best book in the world to learn. You know, but a lot of the Holy Spirit had to open my eyes to a lot of stuff I did not know. So, so that's the problem. It's not that people get married too young. It's that they don't have the tools. They don't have the wisdom and the, and the education. They don't have the knowledge. And they can be trained. There's a lot of countries where people get married younger than they do in America, and their marriages last longer because they have the tools. They have the tools, and so they need to know how to be a wife, how to be a husband, how to be committed, how to be faithful to one person. You know, because there, those lessons there, those things can be taught. They can be taught. When I first married my husband, I wasn't faithful to him. I didn't know how to be faithful. But once I learned better, I knew better and I did better. And today I can actually say I'm a faithful wife. I'm a good wife to my husband. And I never thought I could be such a faithful, godly Christian wife. And I am. And it's by the Holy Spirit and, 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 the, and the information I got from the Bible and submitting myself to the Word of God. And if I did it, anyone could do it. I was raised in poverty by a single parent. Oh, I'm a young girl. I mean, I'm a woman. As a young girl, I never knew my dad. I still don't know who my dad is. And if God can make me who I am now, just think what he can do in your life, especially if, if you have a mom and a dad and you go to church and you're raised in a, in a Christian household. Uh, even if you just go to church, because I didn't even have that. Even if you just go to church, man, man, just, oh. The, the, the blessings, the amount of blessings and the access to the blessings and the wisdom of God that's there, that's available to you. That's a huge blessing, something that we don't want to take for granted. So there's no age in the Bible on when a person should get married. It's when the person is ready. And some people are ready sooner than others. Some young girls, and there's nothing wrong with this, and our society mocks it, but we shouldn't. There's some young girls, all they want to do is get married and have a family. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
There is nothing wrong with that. That's a huge blessing. The Bible commends those type of things. A woman that just want to be married and, and have children and raise a family. That's a huge blessing. You know, if you have a career and you're all career minded, that's okay. There's a place for that. I'm career minded. I'm an entrepreneur. I've, God has blessed me to do a lot of things in my life. But that, that is the basic honorable thing that a woman can do. That's a basic foundation from God to get married and raise and have children and raise your family. It's an honor. And then especially to raise those children in church, to be Bible class teachers, evangelists, elders, and deacons. That's a huge honor because that mom, that mother is helping build up the church, the kingdom of God. That's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with wanting to just get married. I don't know what's wrong with our society today. We just want to push our children out there. And then a lot of young girls, when they decide they, they listen to this wrong advice and then when they decide they want to get married it's like there's no men around they decide they want to get married at 25 or 30 and all the men in their age category uh, that are, are 25 to 30 or 35 are either married or divorced because they put it off and someone told them to put it off oh get your career first I think it's better when you have a male and a female that's, that's married, and they're helping each other go to college, paying each other's way through college. How beautiful can you get? And so there's less of a financial burden on the person. We come up with things society has come up with that that's not in the Word of God, that's not necessarily godly wisdom, and it's like tradition, and we put this on our children, and we wonder why it's not working. We wonder why there's so much divorce, and why so many people don't want to get married today. We put this big burden on them. We put this big burden and so many burdens in so many ways we put on our children and stuff, you know, and, and I know we're not doing it on purpose. We don't know any better. We don't know any better. My son is, is 27. He ain't married and I'm not rushing him to get married. He's a young man, you know, but it's like I'm not rushing him. But at the same time, I never discouraged him from getting married. My son could have got married five years ago when it bothered me. I just want him to be ready. That's all. I just want him to be emotionally and mentally and, and financially ready. And it doesn't even mean you got to be rich. It's just that you're handling your business. If you're a young man, you're handling your business. And if you're a young girl, you're handling your business by being chaste. And you're not out there letting these young men take advantage of your body because that's all they're doing. They don't care. They're just following their hormones. That's what most of them are doing. You know, and, and they're just another notch in their belt. And that's it. I'm speaking in general, but that's the way most young men are. I know I was young. Things hadn't changed. It got, probably got worse, but that's the way it is. Okay. So that's why I want to do in this lesson. I just want to make you aware and open your eyes. I don't want to put you in a box. I'm not trying to put anybody in a box. I'm not trying to mess your life up or halt you or push you too fast or nothing. I'm just trying to give you some information and, and knowledge from a biblical perspective, from a godly wise perspective. I'm just trying to share with you words of wisdom that's going to help you and make your life better. Make your life better as a parent or as a young girl who is thinking, you know, that she wants to be married one day. And even if you don't want to get married, there's nothing wrong with that. We don't, there's not a command to get married or unmarried, except for what I read about if you want to have sex. You know, that's Bible. I just read it to you. Okay. Okay, ladies. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Please, please let me know. Okay. In conclusion, do not rush to marry nor to date. First, make sure you are ready as I shared with you earlier. Enjoy your life while you are young and take advantage of the opportunities around you to learn and to grow and to work on your relationship with God. That should always come first. When you do this first, focus on your relationship with God, your chances of getting married and to the right person will increase and it will be greater. OK, but we don't have to listen to the world that we don't have to fall into the world system, because like I said, I got married young. Everyone said I got married too young. No one believed my marriage would survive. And to be honest, I would do it all over again exactly as I did. I would get married young, if not younger. I would have married my husband sooner. We were ready to get married. And nowhere five, ten years later wouldn't have been no better. Because no one was coming offering us any more information, and we did not know how to go out and get it. But we had God on our side. We had God on our side. Within three years of us getting married, we learned about the church, and we obeyed the gospel. 
and that's what helped save our marriage and kept us together. It wasn't all this scientific stuff or whether we had this counseling or all the little dots lined up or nothing like this. We loved each other. We learned about the church. We learned the truth. We allowed Jesus into our life. And, and we still even messed up, but God was with us. And God is what saved our marriage. God is what kept me with my husband oh, all these years. Hard work and prayer, all that help and sacrifice. But God and me loving my husband and him loving me. And, and me making sure that I chose someone that respected me. And I wasn't even a Christian. I was only 17, but I had enough sense to not, to not waste my time with a man that did not respect me. And you do well to do the same and you can't go. It's hard to go wrong there because the person that respects you is going to respect himself and he's going to do a lot of honorable things in life. Okay, ladies. So I hope this has really helped you young ladies, teenagers, early 20s, 30s. And those of you who are parents, just pray about what I've said to you. Please pray about it and just help your child be all God wants them to be. Help your child be all God wants them to be. They want to get married young. Don't discourage them. You may be messing up their chances of getting married down the road, especially if your daughter is African American. In America, in America, African American women have the slightest chance of getting married. I believe it's 65 percent or more will not get married. And I think a part of the problem is we 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 make them wait and we tell them, no, wait till you're self-sufficient. Wait till you don't need a man. Then go get one. You know, just think about what I'm saying. I know it's not easy to, to hear. I know. I know it's not. You know, but I thank God that, that I got married and people try to discourage me from getting married. I'm glad I didn't listen to them. I'm glad I didn't. But like I said, if, if your daughter wants to get married young, just help her. Just help her. Just help her counseling, give her books, education, have her watch this video, things like that. Just help her. Because if she wants to have sex, she's ready. And so, like I said, not not to putting off marriage and stuff. We're encouraging. We don't realize that we're encouraging premarital sex and, and children being born out of wedlock because this person needs to be with someone. And someone wants to be with them. But anyway, so that's a whole other sermon. Whole another sermon. We're going to pray about this. And we all want our children to marry uh, someone that believes in God who's a Christian. Okay? I understand that. And that's great. Okay, ladies, so there are there. I hope you if, if you are dating or looking for a boyfriend and want to, and, and think about having sex or getting married. I hope that this information has been a help to you. And I, I hope you just 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 give it some thought. Pray about it. Take it to God in prayer. Okay, if you follow in any of these tips, your dating life will be successful. And one day you'll be married to the, at the perfect time for the perfect mate, the person that's perfect for you. That's perfect for you. And it is possible to date someone who's perfect for you. My husband isn't perfect, but he's perfect for me. He's perfect for me. Okay, ladies, there are more, many more resources on my website at terrytimba.org to help you in being a godly woman and a Christian. I invite you to go there when you have time. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, post them below. If you need prayers, let me know. You may contact me. All my information is below. And I also provide free Bible-based counseling here through this nonprofit women's ministry. So thank you for listening. God bless you. May God continue to be with you. May you always be a blessing wherever you go. See you later. Bye-bye.